Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You're up, Amy. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I have two issues this morning. The first one is uh, two contracts for a person named Cody Macon. Um, last year, council approved $10,000 for me to hire a contractor to act as a deputy. And I found a great guy by the name of Cody Macon. Um, you should have his resume and data in front of you. He's very well qualified, has a master's in emergency management, has quite a bit of experience in public safety. Um, Cody currently lives down in Madison, so he would be coming to work for me up to 15 hours a week, at about a total of 525 hours for the year, um, provided we start on May 1st or so. Um, so he would be assisting me with uh, various emergency management things, writing standard operating procedures, helping with um, some of the office duties, like um, making sure the EOC, Emergency Operations Center, is up and running, um, assisting at events and those kinds of things. And I would also like to hire him um, to act as the administrator, administrator of the Local Emergency Planning Committee, or LEPC. Um, I was allocated up to $1,600 in county funds for that in 2021 by council. Um, those are funds that we take in from tier two filers or hazardous material filers. Um, those, are, those funds are directly given to the LEPC um, and they sit in the pot waiting for me to use them. So I've drafted two contracts. I had Grant review them. Um, one is for Cody to be the LEPC administrator, and the other one is for him to act as my deputy. So I'm asking for approval from you all for those two contracts. Anybody have any questions for Amy on the two contracts? No, just clarification on his name. Amy, I'm assuming the contracts are correct and it's Mason, M A S O N. Uh, I hope I wrote that right. There's a sell on the summary of the MA issues for permission meeting that says make an N A C O N. But regardless, I mean, um, you correct that or Make sure that that's correct and then it should be M A C O N. Yeah, okay. on his resume, that's us. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Contracts are right, correct then. Right. Okay, I will correct those then. With that correction, I will make a motion that we approve mm -hmm. contracts or approve Amy's hiring um, for the contracts submitted. And the money's in place, right, Amy? Yeah, yes, that's been in place. I just um, finally finally found someone I've interviewed or I've talked to about nine different people and interviewed um, four of them and, and have had a, a hard time finding someone who's willing to do that hard time. But I finally found a great guy. Jerry, yeah, I'll set you. All in favor. Thank you very much. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hugh, yeah. I have a second issue. Oh, okay. Sorry, Liz. Um, that's okay. Um, since you guys are in charge of grants and the new grant policy um, states that if I want to reallocate any funds, I need to let you know. 
Um, in 2021, we got the State Homeland Security Grant Program, the SHSP grant that was aimed at cybersecurity. We got $246,375 for that. And with that money, we bought five new servers and three new data storage units for the county. Um, that was just under $150,000. Uh, we have, Ramsey and I have drafted a technology use policy and a cyber, it's a cyber security incident response plan. Um, and then later this year, we're going to roll out cyber security training to all county offices. That being said, in my original budget, I had planned for some extra funding to be used to purchase cyber security training. Um, that has been provided for us by the Indiana Office of Technology, so that saved us about $50,000 on that. Um, additionally, we no longer need some money that we had other plans for. Um, we were going to do um, some what's called penetration testing or pen testing that was going to be um, paid for by Purdue and IU, but that prop that program hasn't rolled out yet and probably won't roll out till late this year. So I'd like to reallocate those, uh, that money, it's about $67,000. Uh, remembering this is all grant money and not local money. And so I would like to go ahead and pay for the penetration testing since it's not going to roll out from the state until late this year and we have extra money. I'd also like to have a workshop done, an exercise done on our cybersecurity incident response plan, uh, just to test the validity of it to make sure it works, as well as doing a physical security test, uh, assessment, which would test the physical security of our servers and our data storage systems. And I put in for attending a cybersecurity conference for Ramsey and myself. Um, I'm working very closely with Ramsey on all of this, and I've gotten the initial approval from IDHS um, to revise the budget for these things with the understanding that of the $67,000 we're probably still going to have to give some money back. Um, the way that state procurement rules are, we can't purchase any additional equipment. Um, so there will be a, a chunk of change that we'll end up having to give back and the state is aware of that. So what I'm looking for is just be um, okay from you guys that I'm going to go ahead and redo these projects to um, spend down some of the leftover $67,000. Carla, does she have to transfer that into different funds? Or no? no? Okay. I'm going to um, spend it. Yeah. yeah, I'm not trying to very hard. <laughs> I don't like giving money back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Also, okay. All in favor. Thank you guys very much. Is that all you got, Amy? Yes, it is. Any questions for me before I head out? No, right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, miss. I have um, our two, there's two quarterly invoices this quarter. <laughs> um, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay now? I have two quarterly invoices this quarter I've sent to Carla as well. Um, one is our regular 5311 rule transit to get reimbursement for the quarter, and the other is we, um, the CARES invoice, spending the rest of what CARES money we have left with the state. Um, those just need signed. They're just our normal quarterlies. Um, and then we are also now working on our 2024 budget. Um, I don't have a lot of information about it at this time. It just needs to be put in for signature so I can submit to NDOT by April 29th, and then NDOT will go over them. Any changes they'll send back, and then I will meet with you all to submit those changes. And that's all I have for now. So the federal allocation is 289000 Is that on the? $311, yes. Yeah. And one's 128815 For the, the 24 grant? 
Uh, this is 23. It's your oh, federal okay. allocations for your CYT024. This one for this for the on the one quarter it's for sixty two five ninety four. Okay. And then on the cares is twenty six four ninety two, and that takes up the rest of our cares money. You guys okay? Yeah. It's actually a little less than last quarter. I'm trying to cut costs where I can. <laughs> trying to save money. <laughs> save money. So I'll make a motion that was to sign the uh, rule of transit for the budget and for the operating. All in favor. And then, like I said, on the 2024 grant that we're working on, that's just to initially get it submitted now with signature, and then they'll go over, once it gets back to NDOT, they'll go over any revisions, and then I'll bring it back. Okay. Good? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll probably can't yes, but Grant's not here and Grant has to sign that. This? Yes. Grant, are still on Zoom? Yes. 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 Let him know. Yes. Are we going to do a motion to sign the proposed budget? We did. We get Grant. Oh, I thought This is for a different budget. That's their budget for the upcoming year. Oh, I thought you included that. I think Grant has to sign it, sir. I think what we approved was the CARES Act and... There's something to sign it. Yeah, there is. I mean, a bunch. <laughs> Grant has to sign it. Grant has to sign right there. Well, there too. Me there, me there. There's a bunch of sign. So. He said okay. He said okay. <coughs> all right. I'll make a motion that we all sign the uh, Indiana Department of Transportation's budget for 2024. I'll set the motion. All day. I'll sign it after the meeting. It won't take so much time. Grant on the FMLA disorder that you sent, is that is that what you want to go with? What we wanted was to clear up FMLA in the handbook. Uh, it can go from when you take off for 12 weeks, even if it goes into the next year. What we'd like for it to do is to go from January 1 to December 31st, a calendar year. So you, you would have 12 weeks in that calendar year of FMLA. And that pretty much what this says. You guys had a chance to read it. Yeah. That will identify and make it a lot easier for Carl to track it. I mean, she can go from year to year instead of having to go back and look what month they took it. And when it stopped and all, it, it'll make it a lot easier for everyone. So you have an ordinance number, maybe? Uh, five. Five. So I'll make a motion to adopt ordinance 2023-5, uh, updating and making it clear that how FMLA works from year to year. I'll second motion. All 
Pääministöön Annika. Good morning. I won't take too much of your time, but I wanted to just give a brief update on the gardens. We've had some really exciting progress this year, both here in Lou Wallace and at Laurel. So I just wanted to, to let you know where we were um, and some of the updates. So you should have got, hopefully, one of these cards with our new vision and mission statement for Lou Wallace and then the PowerPoint slides um, at 11 o'clock. So I'm just going to hit the highlights of those. And then if you have more questions, you can always meet later or go over them. But, um, We've had two meetings this year for the Lou Wallace Garden here in the Commissioner's Room. We came up with a new vision and mission statement. So our vision and statement for the Lou Wallace Garden, uh, their community-based collaboration to sustain healthy lifestyles by growing food and caring for the environment. And then the purpose is it for, to be a food pantry and demonstration garden. So the idea is that all the produce we grow is free for anyone in the community that needs it. They can come and take it. And then um, we plan to donate the extra produce to Red Life again this year. Um, and then also to families in need if, if they come to the garden. And then our mission is to create and sustain equitable food systems by providing garden space and healthy food through education and collaboration. So we also have a vision and mission statement that we've come up with for the growing model garden too, but I just want to share the one with you here since it's um, right down in the parking lot. And Shelly and I came before you before with the grant money we've been awarded, but just wanted to remind you that we received uh, $10,000 from a Duke Nature grant and also an additional $10,000 from the foundation to help with funding for the garden. And then we also just recently received uh, a Get Growing grant for $1,500, which is the same grant we received last year to get started. So really excited with the extra funds this year. Uh, 20000 is a lot more than $1,500. Yeah. So we can do a lot more. Um, Whitetail is actually down there today mulching the garden space. So we're, we have enough funds to pay them for the landscaping um, to help us with that this year and cleaning up the space. So we're, we're really excited about that. Um, and then we're planning to meet this afternoon to assemble the raised beds that we've already bought with the grant money and start getting things set up. We have seeds to start and potatoes to plant, so that's exciting. Um, and then as far as the PowerPoint goes, um, Kirk Cox's daughter, Leslie Cox, is a landscape design major at Ball State. And we've been talking with her about some different things as far as the layout of the garden and making it um, for the future for expansion and planning with the race beds, like what would be best. Uh, so we can design it so they can be handicap accessible um, and work well for that space. So I just wanted to like briefly run through the outline of that. So she gave us an idea for placement of activities um, as far as where to put our compost bins and raised beds. And then the other thing that's not on this map that I wanted to bring before you, and the one thing we run into is the issue with water access. So um, last year we ran hoses across the parking lot from the government center, but we've um, been talking with the water board, so Tim Ripperger, to see if it would be possible to potentially tap into water and bring it into a spot in the garden. And it would be possible to come um, from 11th Street in the alley and put a, a tap there in the back northwest corner of the garden. But I wanted to bring it before you before we proceeded to see if you were okay with us pursuing that. Um, that way we wouldn't have to run hoses and we could leave our hoses in the back there and water the raised beds and things. So I, that was the one thing. Um, wanted to bring before you. And if you are okay with it, then we would proceed with going to the town board meeting um, and seeing what those tapping fees may be and how we could use some of our funds to, to pay for that as well. Um, but we don't want to do too much expansion if we don't have access to water and we're going to be running hoses and things. So that's our, our main hurdle. And then another thing that we talked to Leslie about was the slopes on the side. I know you had asked me before about things. And she gave some suggestions as far as plantings that we could do. Um, so we can always meet with you later to talk about those, but some ground covers, or if you wanted to do some cool and warm season grasses, or some prairie plants, there are different options. Um, the thing is, they all require some sort of maintenance, but they have different, there's different um, things for each, so we can always talk about those more later. And then the other thing that um, she addressed was some of the invasive species on the property. So there are a couple invasive trees that are planted, which um, I assume that we would leave there um, and we'd be allowed to remove them. We can use them as an educational tool as far as these are trees you wouldn't want to plant because of their invasive properties and how they can escape from the landscape so I could use those. Um, but there are also, there's the Colorado blue spruce that's um, pretty sure infected with a fungus that will die. So I want to make sure you're okay with us removing that tree if it does die um, and some of those management things. So those are the highlights. It's a lot of it. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah. To me, that's a good idea to get a spigot out there and mm -hmm. not run that across a parking lot. It's a tripping hazard more than anything. Right. But, yeah, I mean, if the town's willing to let you do that, I ain't no problem you got. Yeah, so I'll make a motion we allow well, extension to do that. From, would the water bill then just be added into the county bill? So I wanted to see if it was possible first, and then we could discuss the logistics as far as who, how the payment would work and insurance and those things. So I, I guess that's, um, I don't know if it would be possible to add it to what the government center already has, or we would pay it separately on a separate bill. Um, but we could discuss that later too, as far as once we get it set up, I'm not sure what all the fees would be. But ideally we would just have it on during the summer and then shut it off during the winter and it would just be water. There wouldn't be anything else with it. Um, yeah. As far as sewage and garbage and things, so. Will that be a separate meeting? You'd have to ask the water. Yeah, so I'm not sure as far as the logistics. I just want to see if it was possible first before we, and then we can meet again with 10 and then go before the town board and kind of see what that would be. And then we could come back and once we know what that, if it would be a separate meter or what that cost would be or if we could add it in. Yeah. Okay. I ain't got no problem with that. Okay. I know you guys raised a lot of food last year. And was, yeah, and in just a small cool. space, so we're excited to expand and, and be able to raise more. Um, and then I guess as far as um, the trees go, are you okay with us removing the trees if they're a hazard or if they're dying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Especially in the basin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which the one large calorie pairs, I don't think would remove those, but the ones that are re-sprouting. There's also a tree of heaven that's growing up in the pine trees in the back that needs to be cut out. We cut a few out last year and then um, they said the Colorado blue spruce is dying already, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah and this, those are the, the main things, so I appreciate your time, and we're excited to, to get your again this year and expand the garden, so. Okay. I like to talk with you sometime about the banks, mm -hmm. and not what she's got an idea of. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Do we have a motion from Jerry? Well, uh, I don't know if it's necessary, but I yeah. At least uh, make a motion that that Veronica look into the water tap. I'll second that. All favor. Uh, we have on our agenda a rezone for a bulk storage tank. APC meeting, the board voted to approve a zoning change for 26130 Pocket Road in Batesville for trade industrial supply, and that's to allow the conditional use for bottle of gas storage. And the APC board recommended the zone for just the seven acres south of I-74 to be changed from R1 to A2. And trade industrial supply agreed to install level two landscaping to be in compliance with the code and to set the tank back at least 50 feet north and south of the property. Okay, so as you announced that mm -hmm. no neighbors were there to... Yeah. The okay. neighbors seem happy about it. You guys want to say they're wrong? Yeah, the neighbors, none of the neighbors showed up. Um, they reported... You want to go up there. They reported... Uh, the people that want to put it in there said none of the neighbors. The one neighbor was happy to have them there. Um, the land to the west is already A2. The land to the south is R1, and they originally wanted to put in an industrial zone there, and um, the board decided we didn't want industrial next to the residential, that we were good with going to A2, and then they can do a conditional use put that tank and we put in a bunch of restrictions. We put in down lights, uh, uh, landscaping along the uh, south side there between them and the, the uh, uh, residential zone. And uh, I think it's a good place, but that's what the board voted to do. How much traffic's gonna be on there? I mean, is, is the road sufficient to hold up that much traffic? That was one of the concerns brought up. Um, they were saying, uh, two or three uh, little distribution trucks during the winter time and then one semi truck, however long that takes. Um, they said their traffic should be between 
during daylight hours. Um, they seem to think that, that they would be all right with the road the way it is. So, um, okay. As far as snow removal, um, I think there's a house on the west side there on that part, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Kessler. Mr. Kessler. Um, they might have to clear the road out from, from the property line up to their gate or whatever. That's going to be their problem. Okay. I'm not concerned. Yeah, the, the county road from 46 going north is four tenths of a mile maintenance by the county. But the right of way goes all the way to the interstate. So uh, I think we're, by the records that I saw, it's only four tenths of a mile roughly. This is the neighbor's driveway, and that's where it stops. And all safety issues have been addressed, I guess, by you guys. I'm sorry, I yes. Any safety issues have been addressed by you guys? I mean, ain't it going to be a car hit the ball tank or? There was some consideration there um, from the white line on the highway to their fence is 35 feet. I believe there's a little bit of an embankment there. Um, and then they proposed to put their tank in the center of their lot, which is 209 feet. Give them a little leeway either way there. Um, if that was residential or it was zoned there, you could put a house within 50 feet of the, the highway, so it would be actually be farther away. They also said that there would either be concrete embankments or steel posts between the tank. Um, okay. So you guys have addressed most everything that could be. As far as what we can foresee anyways. I think there's always something you can't foresee. And the reason for the bulk tank is to just to get gas cheaper or I think they want a, they want to be able to distribute quicker in the winter time there. It's um, they want to bring it in on a semi and then use their little trucks to deliver it around in that area. Okay. Thanks Gary. Thanks, Kate. I make a motion to approve the petition to resign. I'll second the motion. All in favor. See you guys put a tank. for John. I'm sorry, Tom. I, I asked him if they had questions for you on this uh, ready grant. Yeah, that turned out to be one of the first projects that the uh, ready organization approved for, for a reason. So. Do we already have 125 set aside? Yes. Yeah. That's part of the ARPA money that we set aside early on. Originally, we set aside 250, but we reduced that to 125 with redevelopment giving 125 as well. Yep, it's our money. I mean, we got gas up to that industrial park up there, so. Yeah, that, uh, it was basically uh, needed early on to make sure that uh, 
um, Reed had access to gas up there, but they also talked to the UNREF and they could also book up the uh, country charm estates up there if they wanted to. The gas company would go pretty much anybody that wants it at this point. So to hear a motion from yeah, the so I make a motion to uh, let Tom sign the grant agreement uh, for the ready grant for the gas bond. I'll second that. All in favor. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, John. Appreciate yeah. your hard work. Well, it's, uh, it's starting to pay off. Yeah, it is. Yes. Mr. Smith. Uh, I was asked to put together some small structure needs, replacement needs, and possibly look into low water crossings, something that would be presented to the council. Uh, we've got a sheet in front of me that has prioritized list for eight structures. I went with it up to about the half million dollar mark. Three need to be done, but go beyond that to get total up to about eight hundred to seventy thousand. Uh, I did not include the emergency structure on Pipe Creek. I could add it to the list as something outside of the priorities, but it's definitely got to be done. So when you guys declared the emergency on here a couple weeks ago. Uh, two of the structures are on South Pocket Road. Uh, they're both the same age. One's more narrow than the other. And if you replace the one that the wall fell off of, the wall collapsed off of, then you probably need to replace the next one down at the same time. Bridgeport and Buena Vista Road to twin eight foot six pipes and the concrete wall fell off of those off of one side of that one. So it needs to be replaced. They're undersized, it's gonna take a bridge to do that. County Line Road is a low water crossing. It's been in the works to try to get replaced for several years. Hopefully I can get that done. I price might be higher than what I expected on that. So I may have to revise that price before I come in. And that's a road is a uh, three-sided box. It's just an eight-foot box, but it needs to be uh, replaced. It sits on limestone. We're going to have to key a new box with the limestone. And then the other structures are on the road that need to be replaced. It's too short. Interferes with the intersection that it's at. Uh, Richland Creek is a uh, another undersized arch pipe with a very large uh, bowl, 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 we'll call it, on the top of the structure. Probably drops a total of 15 to 20 feet on the out, from the outflow of the pipe. Whistle Creek is a small structure. Of, uh, undersized, there against a the pipe that's undersized and a small bridge or something in it. I think that washes out a lot there and it, then it floods the guy's field down below. There again, it started to have a big bowl hole on the outlet of it too because it's undersized. Anyway, that's, all, that's my list. your recommendation to take it on to the council to see if we get some money. Yeah, I'll make a motion that you know we have Larry present it to the council for funding of these bridges. I'll second the council's motion. I'm in favor. Thank you. Uh, I got something that's not on the agenda necessarily, but uh, it, uh, as an addition, maybe it is an addition, it, but it's not on the list I have as far as me goes. It's the uh, annual report, annual operation report for the highways and streets. And I don't know how much 
much of that you want me to read. The summary is on page uh, 10, 8 to 13, but I think it's the second page in. I'm not going to have it. So we have a total of 6.5 there. I'm sorry? Total mileage is 625. Yeah. I think so. I'd have to look at it. It was 625. We didn't do any additions. A few ropes were maybe on that. I've been discussing with some of the foreman as far as whether or not they're on our inventory or if not on the state inventory, whether or not we maintain them or not. So there might be a few more miles we really need to add. I think that's been a problem for a while. I mean, there's some roads we're getting paid for we don't maintain, and some we maintain we're not getting paid for, so we need to really get that straightened out. And also, your bridges, we need to get that updated to what what bridges we do have. We've got an additional bridge that, uh, I don't know, we've been replaced for several years now. It's not in my inventory. So I'll get that turned in. We'll get that taken care of. Uh, you honestly, getting back a little bit to the, those culverts, our last, in, our last inspection on our culvert was done in 2005. It was 18 years old this year, and that's a long time. We really ought to try to get that accomplished, but we don't have any funding for it either. So I don't know if I need to just kind of add something to this small structure. We're just saying we need to try to do an inventory, throw a dollar figure in for that. I guess I would do that if you guys don't mind. You're right, it is 2005. This is the book for culverts in the county. So I know a bunch of them have been replaced. And some of them have been replaced with small structures. So we really need to update this book. That's just four foot bigger too, John. Pardon? That's just four foot and bigger. Yeah. That's just four foot and bigger. So I don't. Well, Justin can tell you how far it is off. It's off bad. So I'm somewhere or another, we need to put it in the budget to update it there. Okay. I'll try that. I'll put an engineer for that on that uh, small structure replacement thing and just go from there. Could that be done with bridge inspection or not? No, not really, because it's bridge inspection's got federal money and we get reimbursed and ah, okay. this is going to be local money. Okay. Can't mix them. Uh, I'm sorry, I got away from the operational report. But back to that, do you want me to read any of the totals or anything? Or? Yep. Okay. Uh, don't know where to start. Where do you go? Total disbursements, total receipts. You want those? Yep. It would be Puerto Rico Highway. Total receipts, one million six hundred and six thousand nine hundred and five dollars. Total disbursements, one million four hundred and five thousand two hundred and eighty-five dollars with the cash investments of at the end of December thirty-first of last year was nine hundred and ninety-eight thousand four hundred and twenty dollars. The NBH restricted receipts one million five hundred and seventy-three thousand four hundred and thirty dollars. And the disbursements of a million, up to a million forty-five thousand, and the cash nine hundred and fifty-five thousand four hundred and ninety. Bumper road streets five hundred eight thousand three hundred and seventy dollars. Receipts and six hundred thirty-two thousand one hundred nine dollars disbursement. Disbursements with a total cash investment of two hundred. Sixteen thousand eight hundred five. King Bridge seven hundred eight thousand nine hundred thirty five dollars. Total receipts the disbursements two hundred forty thousand five hundred forty five, leaving a cash of one million seven hundred nineteen thousand seven hundred twenty dollars. And on that particular item, 
Looks like there's a lot of cash, but we had two bridges that were let last year, awarded last year, that head up to real close to the million seven. It might be a hundred thousand less, but so there's no money in that. That was what I was saying earlier. Really. On the key bridge fund? Yes. Nothing extra. Then we had a couple other three funds we have. Uh, covered bridge, thirty seven hundred dollar receipts which we didn't have any. We have since paid for some work we did last year, pretty early in the spring, so the cash value is not the $82,420 it shows. Uh, community crossings, it varies. I'm not really sure why, but somehow we spent far more than what we, our disbursements are going to our receipts are more than 80000 so we're about I can't of course from bringing in the hole, but, but that varies. That's kind of a, I don't know, the probably explain why it's negative. We have a negative of balance of five hundred and fifty six thousand dollars. But if you need a need to, she probably explain that better than I can. Uh LIT receives a million two hundred and seventy thousand disbursements, a million one hundred and four thousand total cash. Anyway, that's the summary we talked about all funds. We had six million three hundred and twenty thousand receipts and five point seven million five million seven hundred and forty six thousand disbursements and a total cash value of all the funds would be four million and four point five million. Close enough. That page is in it just kind of show the disbursements and the receipts separately. about some money for the highway from you. Right now, it's, it's asked. Yeah, we've got, sorry, we had uh, two trucks that were purchased last year, and those trucks, we paid for the chassis only. Um, to finish those trucks out, we've got bids. Uh, one is a 10-foot uh, single axle and a, we've got a 13-foot tandem. Uh, to finish those out, we got bids from four different vendors. Uh, Roe uh, comes in with the best bids at $66,915 for the uh, 10 foot um, and the 
13 foot, it comes in at $48,412. Um, but $113,000. $14,000 total. Uh, they were really, there was no one else to draw close to us on these numbers. We had to check to make sure that everything was accounted for. In addition to those two, we also need a uh, tailgate spreader, uh, $14,866 to finish these two trucks. Uh, that, John, does that include the plow and everything? Or just the bay plows? New plows. Yes. You know, when we was doing buying those trucks last year, I thought we was going to finish it out of State Road money, State Road 1 money. That's the reason I was asking you where the balance was. So there is no balance to pay for it. So we're going to do an additional. Is that correct? We need to check and see what the balance is. But if there's not that much in there, then we would have to. When I say it's gone, we did, might have 60000 or seventy in it, but it's basically gone. So we'd have to check. Well, what other funds available? There is no other fund. That's it. <laughs> I don't think there's anything that's appropriated now. So I guess, John, we'll have to go ask for an additional from council. Or right. That's the only way I know. Yeah, it's fine. I wanted to uh, get approval on these two to move forward and get um, go to council for an additional appropriation to finish these jobs. I agree. Jerry, yeah. all in favor? Good. Okay. Okay, on the annual report. Uh, I'll make a motion that we sign the annual report. I guess it's for 2022 which is submitted by the County Engineer, Larry Smith. I'll second the motion. All in favor. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. So you just got a bunch of uh, PCs that you're getting rid of and you're removing the hard drive feet. Yes, so you need them off the inventory. You do. And all the serial numbers and everything are here. So I'll make a motion that we uh, go ahead and jump these hard drives or these computers and take them off the capital assets. I'll second the motion. Is that your agenda? All of this. Okay. And then the other one is the health department. Uh, okay, so the health department has a printer. Hewlett Packard. Uh, 
don't have a county sticker on them. And the other is a scanner, but they're both junking, so I'll go ahead and make a motion to remove those from the capital assets. I'll second it. All in favor. Your monthly report for March. Everything we need to know. Just acknowledge we received it. Now I make a motion that we acknowledge we received the clerk's report for March. I'll second it. Okay, we have two sets of minutes. Uh, March the 22nd and April the 5th. So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for March 22nd, 2023. Second. All in favor? I'll second. Oh, okay. distribution. That's for you don't do that. <laughs> okay, we still have one more thing. Or did we do oh John Dunn didn't you okay? Yes. Sorry. Okay, claims, payroll, and deductions. Uh, regular claims and lit, $1,949,017.31. The reason that is so high, there was tax distribution in there. Uh, utilities, $148,964.40. Payroll, $203,882.10. The auditor has approved the issuance of these warrants for various distributions to the taxing units. So I make a motion that we approve the regular claims, lit, utilities, and payroll for 419. Second that. All in favor. from the people that were supposed to do the uh, design for the animal show. Yeah, I've contact, tried, tried to contact two of the architects. I haven't got a call back from them yet. And I received some information that uh, the volunteers want to make sure there's certain things that are included, yeah. and I didn't talk to them as well. But we're moving, just moving slow. I don't know why the two guys haven't called me back again, but okay. I'll touch base with them again uh, Friday. So. But we'll at least we've got an idea of what we want to do. That's important. Okay. All right, thanks. All right. Anybody else? Nancy. Nancy. Good morning. Thank you, Tom. I'm Nancy Main. I'm the uh, executive director for Main Street Brookville. And 
just wanted to share with you that on April 13th, Lieutenant Governor Crouch announced that $149,000 was awarded to 10 Indiana Main Street communities for the Taking Care of Main Street program. Per quote, Lieutenant Governor said that uh, these funds will be vital to helping improve quality of life in these communities. And uh, Main Street Brookville was one of the 10 communities that was awarded $11,725 for the purpose for us to be able to develop a website for, our, for Main Street Brookville and, um, and to acquire the technology, uh, otherwise known as a computer, uh, to successfully accomplish the project. So, I just wanted to thank you all for your support and um, as we make our community a better place to live. Thanks. Thanks, Nancy. Anybody else? I heard something, I don't know what it was. Darrell, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys if you had given any thought to the stormwater control policy. Um, I, we kind of got, the APC's got to kind of know what, what we're going to do because we've got some things coming up, I think, that um, if you, I'd just like to know some direction from you, what you want to do about it. Um, I've only been about halfway through it so far, Bill. So I don't know. When do we get to? June 21st, I think it is. I think we have to have it done by June 21st. June 21st? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh. I don't know if this is time to bring it up, but we've been discussing permanent fees. I think the APC is adding $30 location improvement fees to every permit. Why is that? Um, in the zoning code that was passed years ago, that $30 fee for a location permit was in there, but it was never enforced. So we've started following the law that, that's there. But um, always before, like if you got a house permit, 300 bucks, that $30 was in that 300. Um, to the best that I can read the zoning code, that's not the way the code is written. Um, if, the, if you want to change the zoning code, we can do that. But yeah, that's the, the location permit and the building permit are basically two separate issues, two separate things in the zoning code. Um, the fact that we never collected it before in the past I'm, let, I'm willing to let that slide. That's, you know, but it is in the code. The code was written years ago. You can change that if you guys want to change it. That's up to you. But uh, it's if if it's in the code and that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're going to try and do from here on out. So we got to be really careful what's in the code. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean that. We're looking at a whole bunch of things that need to be straightened out yet, but uh, um, so we really got to be careful with this drainage thing because it'll be code and it'll have to be followed. Yeah, to me, it's um, like Big Brother stepping in from the federal government. You know, it's going to yeah, we're the, getting more and more regulations on everybody. You can't do anything now without a permit or a regulation or some kind of deal. You know. Yeah, the. The stormwater control policy affects big development, not so much the little people. Um, yeah, we do need to know. We need. We do need to be careful. The one thing that I've been trying to do in the code is to take different people out of the code and just have it written in the code what we want. In other words. Right now, according to the code, the surveyor has control of all drainage and it's up to him whatever he wants to do. Part of the idea with the stormwater control policy was to take 
the surveyor out of it. It would be the county's code, what the code says, what we eventually enact, or you enact, would be even for everybody. There couldn't be no, this person got by with this and that person got by with that. We want to get rid of that. We want to make it an even playing field for everybody. Um, if, if it's an even playing field for all the builders out there and all the developers out there, nobody gets nobody gets ahead of anybody else. Everybody has an even chance. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you though. I don't like Big Brother. And when, when I was on the CIC, one of the things that, that we liked was that we tried to be a county where live and let live. But part of live and let live is, is that people have to take responsibility for what they do too. Um, we need to live together and, and having an even playing field I think is what does this. You can convince me otherwise. Right? So we have to meet a minimum state requirement, though, don't we? I mean, the state's coming up with some new yeah, the, regulations. As far as I can read out of what I've been given from the state, the first part of this code covers that. It, it uses the same technology, it uses the same engineering standards. I'm not an engineer. But I did read through it. I did uh, work out some of it with a with a uh, Excel spreadsheet. Um, I think we'll be pretty close to being the same as what the state's going to put down. And and if I'm wrong with that, we'll, we need to, we'll need to be whatever the state is. I mean that's. Well, that's what I'm asking you. We're, we can't do less than what they ask, right? Correct. Yeah, you have to follow state laws. Yes. Yeah. But we don't need to add other things to yeah. that other thing. Yeah. That's my... That's now, my the, the last half of that, um, the diagrams and, and the sewage or the stormwater uh, materials that you'll use in that, those are things that are going to help you guys if you decide to take over a road. If you want to have, if, if somebody's going to build a development, they're going to have stormwater and it's going to go under the road 
and, and someday that they want you to take over the road, you're going to want it built to those standards. You're not going to want substandard work there. And this gives a, a level um, that has been accepted, a, a, a level of uh, materials. And there's room there that people can change it if it's better. This is a minimum standard, not, a, not that. But if you're going to take over a road, you don't want to take over something that's going to be a problem for the county in 10 or 15 years. But most of the time, if we're going to take over a road in those subdivisions, there's already a subdivision control ordinance for that. So why do you need another? Um, this would codify the, the drainage part of that. Um, there's usually drainage in that in a building permit. If you're building a subdivision, they already have a drainage figure. But then, see, then it all goes back to what the surveyor would say in their current code. And we wanted to get rid of that and have it even for everybody that somebody couldn't say somebody's getting off with something. Ten years down the road we find out. This gives us a basis for um, what we're going to do, what we're going to expect, what the inspector can see, what the inspector can say, yeah it was done this way or no it wasn't done that way with these materials. So one of the complaints I had from a person that called was that, I mean, I agree with you, it should be even for everybody if we do this, because this person said, well, if they ask them to do something, it was never enough. There's always something else you need to do. It's like you do what you're at, what they're asking. I don't know, I don't know what, who they dealt with or anybody. I, I don't know anything about it. Just, that was a complaint. So if we treat everybody fairly and we follow the state code, we don't need to add anything else, in my opinion. Okay, thanks, sir. come in here and write that code. And man, everybody was up in arms about that, how horrible it was, and it was. So we done the CIC and, and wrote our own codes. So 
So not all the time a professional's opinion ain't being the best thing. It depends if they're in Indianapolis or Chicago or L.A. or where they're at, how, how do they configure Franklin County. You know, to me, we're unique and we need our own, our own set of things to follow. I understand that completely, but uh, when you're talking about development, uh, and much scale development, you have uh, certain individuals potentially affecting the rights of several property owners because of the impacts that they're, they're having. If it's not controlled, um, put in a lot of hard new surface, a lot of new houses, things like that, it, it's going to have terrible impact. And we've all been seeing some of the results of rainstorms that happen. And I have a nice little PowerPoint pre preservate, or presentation that I put together of a rain event that happened in the beginning of March. It wasn't a very significant event, but it had a lot of, a lot of impact. And uh, it shows how quickly that water can rise and cause problems. And, and that's without any new development. You add new development to it, it's going, to, it's going to be pretty significant what it does. So again, you know, I, I get it, you know, consultants may not fit what's here for Franklin County, but it's about trying to be responsible, making responsible decisions for development for the people of the county. And if you don't make a responsible decision here, there's going to be a lot of impacts that's potentially going to happen. Rob, we have those storm events every year all over the country. It's not just Franklin County, it's everywhere. Just watch the news every time they have a flood. Yeah. Something that's happened since the beginning of time, too. But I understand where you're coming from. Just trying to protect the county. Anything else? Anybody got anything else? Dr. Um, Beebe. This is Jolene, the treasurer. I just wanted to remind the taxpayers that the deadline is coming up for the spring installment. They're due on May 10th. Um, and our office is open from 8 to 4, and we are open for lunch. Thanks, Jolene. And Tom, Sarah and Duffy would like to know which bridge was not on the report that you wanted on the report. I don't remember saying anything about a bridge not being on the report. Larry did. The pipe, the pipe Creek structure that we declared an emergency in the last meeting. Oh, yeah, it's not on the bridge inventory. Okay, Pipe Creek? Correct. Okay. Yeah, it's just a small structure that I don't know why it wasn't on the inventory, but uh, like Larry said, the one we placed on Veneta Road several years ago is not on the inventory either, but it's there. It was a low water crossing. Anything else? All right, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll